Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Hello, good evening, and welcome. Ah, yes, and here we are again on a Saturday evening, moving in a week's time, and more about that in a moment. But it is, of course, for now, Saturday, 9 o'clock, it is Jumping In, the best in modern and contemporary jazz with myself, H. And me, Chris. Yes, welcome along to this week's show, and it really is summer, believe it or not. Whether it's the sound of leather on willow as New Zealand and England square up for the third test, or gut on grass at Wimbledon fortnight gets to its halfway point, where is the time going? Well, here on Jumping In, it's going swingingly, and over the next hour or so, we'll bring you the very best in jazz sounds around. So, H, what have been your top spinners this week, other than uh, Strawberry and Pims, obviously? Ah, yes, if only, eh? if only. Uh, well, what have I been enjoying? Uh, there's some sp- spheres, spheres of influence, yeah. Caleb Wheeler-Curtis, really nice. Uh, knee has got a new one out on the spectrum, and there's a bit of a fragment from an old favourite. And for me, well, we raise a glass to old Iceland. We watch the clock go around one more time, and to kick off, there's nothing like a good game of cards. You'll need two packs, though. Here's Canasta. Thank you. 
Canasta there from the Sam Parnin Big Band. I uh, really enjoy this EP. Sam is still studying composition at Jacobs School of Music in Illinois University, but he says during the lockdown, Canasta became part of his family's routine, and they'd often play after dinner, hence the title of his four-track debut release. The music was Sam's project during the lockdown, and he composed, arranged, and recorded the whole thing at home as well as playing trumpet, piano and accordion and forming a virtual big band with fellow students and friends. The writing throughout is fresh and exciting, the soloing strong throughout. And given the circumstances under which it was put together, I think we can look for more interesting releases from Sam and his pals in the future. Indeed, always looking forward to any of these new guys and girls coming through all the time. It uh, bodes well for the future of modern jazz, it has to be said, the amount of talent out there. Uh, this lot, well, um, they're still young uh, by our standards in any case, although yes. certainly a fairly well established, it has to be said, knee body. Been around for quite a few years. We had the great joy of seeing them at the Brussels Jazz Festival a few years ago, or Brew Jazz Wee, as it's now known in a good clubby scenario. Uh, an amazing band to see live, not uh, least uh, because of uh, Nate Smith, who uh, you uh, watched for about 10 minutes before you realise he's doing the bass lines and the drumming, <laughs> both of which are spectacular, on his own. Don't ask me why. Uh, I suppose it cuts down on travelling costs, doesn't it? But either way, very impressive indeed. They've got a new one out uh, on edition, a uh, colourful album cover called Spectra. And this is it, Spectra. <laughs>
as you can gather probably there. It is live, another live album. I, I think, uh, I do like a live album, I must admit. I think this is about their fourth. They've certainly done sort of live in Paris, I think, and live in Rome before now. Uh, but this is their very latest, Nibody Live at Le Crescent on Edition. Nibody being Ben Wendell on a saxophone and effects, Shane Ensley on trumpet and effects, Adam Benjamin on keyboards, and as I say, I think I called him Nate Smith before, who's also a drummer. Nate Wood, of course, drums and bass, yeah. Saves on the packing. He does both, and it's, it's hard to believe until you actually see him doing it. He's doing all the rhythms, playing one stick in one hand and using his feet on the kit, and then playing the bass guitar as well. You hadn't Amazing. noticed till I pointed no, it out. The I hadn't you, either, you so I was just surprised. And then you see he's doing both. It's, it's crackers, <laughs> uh, but amazing stuff. And yeah, really spectacular. It is uh, the new album, as I called Live at the Crescent Spectra, and it's got a sort of spectra on the front, all sort of a multicolored front on their edition album, which is. Uh, was out, um, I think, on the 8th of June, if memory serves correct. And, yeah, it's a number of good tracks, a really good, as you say, a great sort of drum bass solo between one man uh, on one of the other tracks towards the end there. Well worth checking out if you like Knee Body, a very sort of exciting band, a real firebrand, a collective, as they describe themselves. And uh, I wouldn't disagree with saying one of the most exciting bands of their generation, known for sheer virtuosity and musicianship. And it's difficult to argue with that. Indeed it is, yes. Now, a band I was looking out for, but we didn't catch on a recent trip to Brussels, uh, is another duo from the city who've been making a name for themselves on the European tour circuit. Starting out at the ELB Jazz Festival back in uh, 2019, followed by a gig at Ancien Belgique in their own town, and then a trip to Reykjavik, where they got the name from a unique building. They are Glass Museum. And from their second release, here's the title track, Reykjavik.
Definitely a group with their own sound, Reykjavik from a Glass Museum, a Brussels-based keyboards and drums combo who certainly make a big sound for a twosome. They uh, undoubtedly, I think, have some similarities to uh, Gogo Penguin and perhaps Mammal Hands, but none the worse for that. Reykjavik came out in 2020 and has multiple influences from classical and minimalist music via EDM and arriving at jazz. We'll look out for them later. Hi, this is Maria Schneider, and you're listening to Jumpin' In with H and Chris on Manx Radio. Thank you. 
Lovely stuff, and uh, if you didn't recognise it at the beginning, I'm sure by the end, anyone who's been a fan of the great, late great Kenny Wheeler, or indeed John Taylor, for it was he, it was his band uh, on a newly, I was going to say not a new release, but on uh, the wonderful Jazz in Britain, which you find on Bandcamp, who have been releasing all sorts of gems from the glory days of British jazz in the 60s and 70s and through to the 80s, from the likes of Paz and uh, Ron Matheson and goodness knows what else. Quite often things like cassettes, and this one is remastered from an original cassette copy, which is uh, from the 1970s. Must have to look and see. I've got it in the attic somewhere. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but being re-released, remastered, and put on great sound sounds really fresh. Still sounds sounds fresh technically, as it were, in the recording, and fresh musically as well. As did pretty much anything that Kenny Wheeler added his trumpet to. Wonderful stuff. Stellar lineup, as you'd imagine, of the uh, a the cream of the crop of British jazz for so many years. Chris Lawrence on the bass. One of the undersung heroes of British jazz in so many ways. Tony Levin on drums and percussion. John Taylor, of course, leading from the piano, electric piano, as he used to like very much in the 70s then. Uh, The great Stan Saltzman on saxes. Chris Pine on trombone. And uh, Ken Wheeler on trumpet and flugelhorn. It's called Fragments. And uh, it's well worth checking out. Like I said, go to Bandcamp. You'll find it in Jazz in Britain. Uh, If you subscribe to Jazz in Britain, you get all these downloads uh, sent to you pretty much direct. Well worth a punt if you like classic, brilliant 70s and 80s British jazz. And there's some really good stuff in there. It is a mixed bag, I have to say, because some of them are air shots, some of them are yeah, cassettes, is. some of them are recordings done by the band that might not have complete uh, tracks or just uh, working rehearsals, but very, very interesting indeed. Now, another show and uh, another prodigy, uh, this time one yet to tour UK or Europe. However, uh, 16-year-old Brandon Goldberg was just 15 when he recorded his second album and 13 with his first And he has a very different approach to piano playing and composition, with neither the flash and bravura which characterised Eldar, nor the quiet introspection of Joey Alexander, who's undoubtedly coming out of his shell as well, which uh, probably is the most noticeable thing to stand out. He's just a well-rounded pianist, with a harmonic sense and the chops of someone who's obviously enjoying the music, and he sounds like he's been around a lot longer. Here's one of his original compositions, Authority. What's up, Brandon? It's Ralph Carney. Give me a shout, man. We hook up later this week. Sit down and talk about some things. All right, peace.
Wunderkind Brandon Goldberg there with an original composition, Authority. And as you heard, played with great authority, Brandon keeps good company. And one of uh, the final recordings, as you heard with that uh, quote on the telephone call at the front, the late great Ralph Peterson on the drums, Josh Evans on the trumpet, Antoine Dry and Stacey Dillard on saxes, Luke Curtis on bass, and Brandon on the piano. The album is called In Good Time and is worth taking some time to listen to. Yeah, they're just too good, these kids, aren't they? Yeah, ridiculous. just you, know, you feel ashamed or a sort of, you know, I'm not worthy, my word. Uh, we're worthy to do jumping in happily, uh, I have to say, uh, Chris and H with you, with the best in modern and contemporary jazz. Just a reminder that we are moving for the summer. Uh, this is to allow for programming changes. If you've ever listened to the wonderful John Kaneen on a Tuesday night with his folk show, uh, John has decided over 40 years he's been doing that show amazing and he's decided now is the time to uh, hang up his microphone or headphones or whatever you hang up when you stop presenting a folk show after so many years of fantastic music and his knowledge and passion is uh, unparalleled on that. But uh, as he said, not getting any younger and I think now is the time is, is uh, right so we'll sorely miss John. It does mean the schedule's being re uh, rejigged for the summer. It might be rejigged again, but uh, stay tuned for that. At the back end of the summer, as we head back into the autumn, as things change again. But uh, for the summer going forward, we'll still be here next week. But then after that, in essence, jumping in, we'll be moving to the Friday night. And then Sweet and Swing, which is normally on the Friday, is moving to where the folk show used to be on Tuesday night. You got that? OK, yeah, I'll say it again, I'll write it down. But just to be aware, we'll be moving to Friday rather than a Saturday in a week's time. OK, coming up, uh, another one that's been so much good stuff heading my way uh, of late, or our way, I should say. I really don't know where to start. And this is another one, uh, not a gentleman I was that familiar with, Caleb Wheeler Curtis with Heat Map. Uh, terrific stuff, and I really rather enjoyed this one towards the end. It got a sort of slight minimalist feel about it. It's called Spheres. <laughs>
Really been enjoying that one, I must admit. A Caleb Wheeler Curtis heat map uh, due out on July the 15th via Imani Records. And uh, thanks very much indeed to Imani and, uh, and Braithwaite to forwarding that stuff to us. Wonderful. Uh, really been enjoying that one very much. Great quartet. Oren Evans, yes, he of the Bad Plus for a year or two at least on piano. Uh, Eric Reeves bass. Gerald Cleaver, wonderful. Used to play with Thomas Stanker as well, of course. Really great uh, drummer as well. Uh, like I said, coming out on July the 15th. It's uh, Curtis, uh, his third Imani release as a leader and, uh, as it says, a testament to his development as an artist who simultaneously maintains a gift for, maintains a gift for collaboration and individual vision. And he says he likes to leave it sort of loose so some of the music is composed and then he likes to leave space for improvisation. Part of that was just recognising that I like music, music with space in it, says Curtis, and I wanted to appreciate the sound of the music in the air. Well, it definitely works for me, that one there. <laughs> Wouldn't mind heat map on the Isle of Man. I don't know that we get enough heat one way or another, but uh, already been getting some great reviews. Uh, Jazz Times says, uh, Caleb Willie Curtis negotiates taut bop flavoured contours with a meld of Desmond like coolness and blues toughened acerb. And uh, our own mate, Selwyn Harris, hello, Selwyn of Jazzwise, uh, says of the album, uh, his alto sax playing is intensely focused and garrulously inventive, digging deep into progressive bop through to post-Coltrane and Ornette freestyle jazz and R&B funk traditions. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to disagree with that, Selwyn. The answer is, check it out yourself. It's July the 15th, you can grab it in your favourite record emporium or download. Indeed. And that's about it for this week's show. Don't forget the changes ahead, but equally the changes won't affect those of you who podcast the show. And it's available online, of course, at whatever time you choose to have a listen. Uh, Now, more award winners. In fact, uh, this particular group won two of the Grammys, as it were, of the Danish Music Awards back in 2019. And they are a Danish newcomers, Svaneborg Kardib. A bit like a glass museum earlier, they're another keyboard and drum duo, this time, however, taking their inspiration from Scandinavian folk music with a contemporary twist. And if you wondered where the name Svanborg Kardib came from, they are Nikolai Svanborg on keyboards and Yonis Karbig on the drums. Of course. Here's Orbit. See you next week. <laughs> More interviews heading your way. Look after yourselves. See you then. Bye for now.